So when we talk about being on the church being on mission, um, it's sometimes too easy for us to just kind of make it somebody else's job. Well, that's a missionary's job. I'm not a missionary. Or, well, that's the pastor's job. I'm not a pastor. Um, but mission, God's mission, is to share the message of salvation by grace through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. That's God's mission. And that's something he calls all of the church to, not just the guys who are gifted evangelists. The whole church gets gifted. And so what we do is we look at our, our church as a whole and our values, and we say, how can everything we do help us share God's message of salvation? Because the message of salvation is the message that saves. That's what, when people believe, they're saved, right? But it's also the message that sustains us and keeps us going. Even if you've been believing in Jesus since you were a little kid, or maybe you've been believing in Jesus since you were a teenager, maybe you've been believing in Jesus for just a few years or a few months or a few weeks. The message of salvation that saves us is the same message that feeds our soul. And that's why we value being missional. If you have your Bibles with you today, you can turn with me to Romans chapter 10. Um, and I want to tell you, Romans 10, starting in verse 14, this is not just for, you know, for pastors. It's not just kind of like Paul just kind of wrote out a little section just for pastors in parentheses. No, no, no. This is for everybody. So Romans 10, starting in verse 14. If you don't have your Bibles, it's okay. It's right up here. Reading in Jesus' name. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? How are they to hear without someone preaching to them? I'm going to just pause for a second. The translation of that word preaching is really proclaiming or sharing. It's kind of the, it's, you know, it's speaking in a, in, a, in, you know, in a way that just says, hey, I'm declaring this to you. So I don't want you to hear when you hear preaching to be like, oh, see that? I knew it was pastor's job. <laughs> No, um, this word for pro preaching or proclaiming is just the word to like shout it out, right? So when you hear me saying the word preaching, I want you to hear shout it out. Okay, so I'll read that one again. And how are they to hear without somebody preaching? Shout it out. And how are they to preach? Shout it out. Unless they are sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Shout it out. But they, they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed us? And what has he heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. I like the fact that he doesn't just kind of go through this like it's some formula. Well, if I proclaim the gospel then, you know, everybody I talk to is going to get saved. Easy peasy, no problem. Paul comes out and, and he gets really honest with us. And he says, Lord, who has believed what he's heard from us? The truth is, not everybody believes. Not everybody believes the first time they hear it. And maybe even for you, Maybe you too didn't believe the gospel the first time you heard it. Aren't you glad somebody kept sharing it? I am. So let's not get tired of being on God's mission. Because faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Amen? As a church, we value being missional. Okay, so you got the first part of the message, um, which is that we're discussing the value um, of being missional, uh, of God's mission being a part of, of who we are. It's a part of our identity, not just a part of like our occasional activity, um, but really a part of God's intention for his people. 
and as I as I think about if I as I think about this, I think about um, I think about Philip. So here's Philip's story. After Jesus went into heaven and the church started getting together and you know and Pentecost happens and and you know and, and thousands of people believe and um, and, and the church just starts growing like crazy. They're just, they're out in public. They're hanging out in the temple. They're proclaiming that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is the Savior, and that salvation is only through him. And, and, they're, and they're just doing it as a part of their normal, everyday life. It's just their activity. When it's mealtime, they, they just get together for dinner. And, 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 and people will come over to their house, and, and they're breaking bread together, and they're having their meals together. And if, and if somebody needs a little something like... Like, you know, like Ron and Carol need some stuff moved and people just kind of get together and they do that. And that's what was happening in the early churches. People were just getting together and they were helping out and, and they were they were being the church. And as all of that stuff was happening, um, if somebody was was hungry, the the church would help help feed them. But as the church grew. I mean, it's, it's not actually a lot different. I, you know, we want to, I want to say a big thank you to Galen for, for, you know, for taking up. I want to say a big, huge thank you to Ken. Ken's been, you know, leading the, the feeding people ministry arm of this church for a long time in connection with the, with the food shelf. And, uh, and recently, Ken passed it off to Galen. And Galen's kind of, I, I was there the other week, and Galen's getting his feet wet. How's that going? <laughs> it was warm. <laughs> so, Ken, thank you. Thank you for a long, I don't know, how long, how long have you been working with the food show? Ten years. Ten years? Ten years of feeding the hungry. part of that, there's still a couple of open spots on the sign-up sheet. This is our month. June is our month. And um, in the early churches, the church was just blowing up. And people were getting saved all over the place. And, you know, it started off with the apostles, you know, like helping to feed everybody. And then it just got so crazy busy that a few people started getting overlooked. And as people started getting overlooked, you know what happens? <laughs> Same thing that happens today. Complaining. I know, you think to yourself, who complains at church? Nobody. It happens. Maybe not at this church, another church. <laughs> so in the early church, people were getting overlooked, and so they started to complain. And, they, you know, and the apostles got together, and they prayed, and they said, this isn't good. We want everybody to get fed. We don't want people complaining. And as they prayed, and they sought the Lord's face, and they asked for God's wisdom... They came up, God came up, gave them a plan. He says, we're going to call deacons. Some men who are called by God, gifted by the Holy Spirit to serve others. And, um, and they did that. I'm going to, I know it's not, it's not in there. So I'm just going to kind of bop into Acts chapter 6. This is what it says in Acts chapter 6. Now, um, da, 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 da. The twelve summoned the full number of all of the disciples, all the, the, the whole church, all the followers of Jesus. It's not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and, and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to, the, uh, to prayer and the ministry of the word. And what, what the, the, the apostles said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen. A man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenius, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. And they set these before the, uh, the apostles, and they prayed, and they laid hands on them. 
And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in, Jer in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests even became obedient to the faith. And that's what happens when the body of Christ gets involved in living mission, in being missional, is that things start to happen, and people just say, hey, I want to be a part of that. And people start believing and an entire community like Jerusalem starts to get transformed because people are believing in Jesus Christ. And, it, and, and, it, you know, and I hate to say it, but it, it started with some complaining. And the complaining only happened because the leaders, well, let's be honest, dropped the ball. Guess what? It happens. Leaders drop the ball. Not intentionally. But sometimes somebody gets overlooked. And I get it because I've done it. And all we can do is apologize and, and ask God for wisdom and say, hey, how do we move forward in a good way? And they did. They prayed. God answered. And they called seven men whose full-time job, just like Ken, just like Galen, feeding the hungry. That's awesome. But God didn't just use them to feed the hungry. Stephen, man, he, got, he was bopping all over the place preaching the gospel. Philip, check out what happens to Philip. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 8. If you have your Bible on, uh, on your iPad, just kind of scroll down a little bit. Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 26. Now remember, God called Philip to basically to feed the hungry, right? You think to yourself... Hey, if your job is feeding the hungry, that's what you do. You feed the hungry. This is what ends up happening to Philip. Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 26, reading in Jesus' name. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now, I'm wondering if Philip was like, Hang on a second, man. My job is feeding the hungry. Send, send somebody else's job. I'm not a missionary. I'm a deacon. I just feed the hungry. He didn't. He didn't say that. It says that this is a desert place. And, and he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all of her treasure. And he had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning. And he was seated in his chariot and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the Spirit said to Philip, go over and join his chariot. What? Again, Philip did not say, hang on, hang on, hang on. My job is to feed the hungry, not to run alongside of chariots. No, he didn't say that. And exactly what he did. So Philip ran, verse 30, ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you're reading? He said, the Ethiopian, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him, probably because he was tired of hearing him pant, you know? <laughs> now the passage of, the, of scripture that he was reading was this. It was in Isaiah. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth in his humiliation Justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life was taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth. And beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here's water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. They both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the, sp when they came up out of the, water the spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. And the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus. And he passed through and preached the gospel to all the towns until he came all the way back up to Caesarea. Okay, so this is awesome. Seriously. Philip 
is hanging out, doing his job, feeding the hungry, doing that stuff, filled with the Holy Spirit. An angel comes and says, hey, I need you to head down to the roadside. Literally, a desert road. It heads from Jerusalem down to Gaza, and then it kind of heads south. So if you think about a map of, it'd be easier if I'm doing it this way. If you think about a map of the Middle East, okay, here's the Mediterranean, and it just kind of comes down here. Egypt, Egypt is here, and then down here would be Ethiopia, okay? Jerusalem's right here, Sea of Galilee up here, Caesarea is up in, near the Sea of Galilee, right, okay? And then there's another Caesarea over here, okay? Ocean here. Jerusalem here, here's the road, okay, road to Gaza. And so the angel of the Lord says, hey, go down to that desert road. So he leaves Jerusalem, goes down to the road, and starts jogging along the road with this Ethiopian in a chariot. Now, I have never ridden in a chariot. The, only, the closest thing I came is, you know, kind of like seeing Ben-Hur. Um, that, those things looked fast. I don't think I could run alongside those things. Maybe he was going slower or something along those lines. But, you know, he was literally running alongside the chariot, sharing the gospel. Hey, here you're reading Isaiah. It's pretty awesome. Do you understand it? No? You want some help? Thanks for stopping the chariot. <laughs> Woo. Hops into the chariot, then rides in the chariot, just sharing the gospel. He's heading away from home. He's on the desert road, heading away from home, boom, 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 sharing the gospel. And as he's sharing the gospel from the scriptures, the Ethiopian starts believing. He just starts believing in Jesus. And the message is salvation. And then they see water. We don't know how much water. We just know that as they're on a desert road, they saw some water. My bet is, it was a puddle. That's my best guess. Hey, what's to stop me from being baptized? Absolutely nothing. Let's do it. Boom. So as soon as they get down, they get into the water. They do a baptism roadside. I'll admit I have never done a roadside baptism. I've done baptisms in churches, living rooms, pools, hot tubs, rivers, lakes, a reservoir once. Did I say living room? That one was cool. What's that? Irrigation canal, yes. I got to participate. I didn't actually do that one, but I got, I got to participate in that one. You know, but I've never done roadside ditch baptism, which sounds awesome. <laughs> because, like, can you imagine being on a road trip with somebody, sharing the gospel with them, and then all of a sudden they're like, dude, I see the water in that ditch. Let's do baptism. I'm like, yes. And they do. And then as they're doing this baptism, he, they both come out of the water, and boom, angel of the Lord takes Philip, and he's gone. He just disappears. He does it like a disappearing act, just like, just like Jesus did on that Emmaus road trip, you know? Gaza road trip, boom, gone. He's, he's gone, and all of a sudden, he finds himself in Azotus, which is like a city up along, up along the coast. It's like a little beach town. Now, I'll admit to you, just a little confession. Occasionally, I pray that the Lord would transport me to a beach town. I make all sorts of promises about sharing the gospel the whole way. <laughs> Dear Lord, please, please transport me to Key West. I will, I will share the gospel the whole way home. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. But for Philip, it did. It really did happen. He shares the gospel. Was it his job? No, his job is to serve tables. His job is to feed the hungry. But he shares the gospel wherever he goes, wherever the spirit leads him, wherever he finds himself. And sure enough, he finds himself by the beach and he shares the gospel all the way back up north, up to Caesarea. It's awesome. Seriously, that's awesome. And when it sounds completely amazing like that, it could be easy for us to be like, whoa. Whoa.
But what's harder is to realize that God calls us in to be missional just like that. Now, he may not transport you to a beach town. I'm just going to put it out there. He might not. Doesn't mean he won't. Just he might not. But when the Lord calls us to, to walk along the road, we walk along the road. When the Lord calls us to, to speak up and say, Hey, do you understand what you're reading? Do you know where you're at with Jesus? What do you believe? When God calls us to do that, we do it. And who knows what God's going to do? We read from Romans that some will believe, but not all will. And that's not your job. Our job as the church is not to be the Savior. It is to be missional, to be on God's mission. It's God's mission because God's the one who saves, not us. We, we just get to share the story wherever we go. Whether it's along the road, jogging along the side, sitting in the car, or hanging out at the beach. Wherever we go, that's where we share the message of salvation. So whether it's, whether it's your, your, while you're at your regular job or whether it's another time. We share the message of salvation. That's what we do. It's who we are. It's part of our identity, but it's also what we value. If we're honest, a lot of us will say, that's terrifying. I don't want to share the gospel. I don't need it. I can barely bring up Jesus' name. I don't even pray when I go out to dinner at a restaurant. I know some people who struggle with that. They're like, wait a minute, you're going to pray? <laughs> so today, as a congregation, if we're honest about struggling with being missional, about Jesus' message of salvation being a part of our every day, then we need to pray about that and ask the Lord because the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us the opportunities. The Holy Spirit's the one who led, him, who led Philip down to the, to the desert road. The Holy Spirit's the one who like plopped him up and took him up you know, to Zodas. So the Holy Spirit is the one who will equip us too, who call us too. And who knows where the Lord is going to lead us? It could be a beach town. It could be a desert road could be wherever somebody needs to hear about Jesus Christ and the salvation that only comes through him. You pray with me? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come before you and we, we confess to you. Lord, I've heard that the number one reason why people don't share their faith, why people don't share the gospel, the number one reason is that they're afraid. The number two reason is because they feel like they don't know anything. So I'm asking you, Lord God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, to take away our fear. 2 Timothy 1.7 says that the Lord has not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and self-control. So I pray that you would pour out your spirit in us your church, that we would really value mission. So much so that you put your word on our lips, that you carve it into our hearts, that you place it on our minds, that we hear those opportunities as you lead us. Run alongside that chariot. Go talk to that dude. And that, Lord, you would lead us to be in your mission no matter where we are, whether we're you know, on, on, on a desert roadside or whether we're in the sewer, Minnesota, whether we're at home or whether <laughs> we're in feeding the hungry, whether we're on the beach side or whether we're working our way back towards, back towards home. I pray, Lord God, that you would put your word on our lips and your mission and our values. It's in your name we pray, Lord Jesus, our Savior. Amen.